this is Roy Canning and this is Printed Pieces. We're talking about 3D printing and what it can bring to the board gaming hobby. So this is gonna be an interesting video. It's basically a compilation of a whole bunch of my printed pieces segments all put together. I keep getting tons of questions asking about like, what do I do for this for 3D printing or what do I do for that for 3D printing? And I thought it might be helpful to have a whole bunch of my printed pieces videos in one video. So I know this video is really long, but it's 20 episodes worth of printed pieces. So make sure to check it out. You can skip around to see where I talk about different stuff about like how I got started 3D printing and like kind of my journey for the last six months in me 3D printing and all of my board game breakfast segments. Well, I hope you like it. Make sure to leave in the comments down below questions you have about 3D printing and hopefully I can help point people to uh, where to look for different things. Thank you for joining me and let's get to all of the videos. So I actually got to get my printer built. So I went through the process of busting open the box and I've watched tons of different videos of like how to's to put this thing together. And I began the process of taking it all out. The Ender 3 comes in a whole bunch of different pieces that you have to put together and make sure everything's done in the right way. Overall, the experience was not super difficult, but even with watching some of these different like how to put together videos, and I had watched a bunch since I'd been waiting since Christmas to be able to actually do my 3D printer and actually build it. So I had watched a ton of like different content and people talking about the printers and putting them together. Overall, like if you're into building like if you've built Ikea furniture before, you've put together like different models or things like that. This is like nothing new. You just read the instructions and put things together in the right way. Um, it's super interesting though, cause like this has electronic pieces that move back and forth. You have to plug the cords in the right place. I was actually super excited because I got everything together and the Ender comes with a test file on it, which is like this little like Creality dog thing. Um, and a lot of people print those out as their first print. So one of the things I did was everybody talks about with 3D printing, you have to level the bed. So I made sure the bed was leveled and I popped in the SD card and there was the dog on there already. And I'm like, let's just try to print this. So I printed out my first little 3D dog um, and it turned out pretty good. So I'm like, hey, that's amazing. Like the first print I do on this thing just turns out and like looks really cool. So I'm really excited about that. Um, then the next thing I did, I was like, I need to make something board game related. So I jumped in and made this Keyforge deck. Um, I actually painted this up, but uh, there was a file online that um, I downloaded and threw it in there. But um, but yeah, that is my experience with building my Ender 3. Um, you've seen a couple different shots of me putting it together and a couple different pictures of this I built. Um, next week, I wanna talk about where you can find board game files that you can print off. A lot of files are for free on the internet and um, there's also a lot of places that you can buy different files and things like that. And people are running Kickstarters constantly all the time for a lot of different gaming things for your 3 3D printer. So on the next week, I'll see you then. So today I want to talk a little bit about where you can find files for your 3D printer and what kind of things there are out there for you to be able to print. So there is a website called Thingiverse. Um, that's one of the main ones that a lot of people use. People can go on there and upload STL files, which are the files that 3D printers read with the little models. And you can put that into a program called Cura and you can slice those files up for your specific printer and be able to make it so that it can be printed out. But there are all sorts of different things for board board games that all sorts of people in the community have created. There are lots of amazing creators that design these files and they're excited about board gaming too. So they'll make files for the board games, throw it off there. So one of the cool things I printed out is I find I was just going through and I was just typing in the names of different board games that I owned to see what kind of files that other 3D printing enthusiasts had made. And one of the things I thought was really cool was that um, in Specter Ops, there's just like this little token in the game that's the car that moves around. And I'm like, uh, well, that's kind of cool. I just typed in Spectrops because it's one of my favorite games and someone had made a Spectrops car. I haven't done anything to this. Like I haven't like tried to paint it up or make it crazy at all. Um, and it's pretty basic as far as the design, but it will be cool to have a little car token that can move around the board instead of having just a little basic like cardboard circle token. Um, and I just really like thematic things. So I think that's kind of cool to add things to the game like that. But there's all sorts of different stuff like crazy twisters that can be added into like Forbidden Desert or maybe cool like virus cubes that could be added into Pandemic. And there's tons and tons of game inserts, tons of like tokens for Blood Rage or tokens for a bunch of different games that you have already. Um, it's really cool to see how the board game community and 3D printing has 
made these things free. They've made different files and put them on Thingiverse for people to be able to check out. So if you have the time, just go to Thingiverse and like go and type in like the names of some of your favorite board games and see if there are like different prints that people have made up for these games and see like the variety of things you could make if you had a 3D printer. Well, this has been Printed Pieces. Thanks so much for joining me and I'll see you on the next one. Today I want to talk all about the cost of 3D printing. So there are a lot of different things that can go into cost, but when I first started I was a lot less expensive than I actually thought it was going to be. Um, I searched around for a bunch of different printers and you can buy printers that are easily in the thousands of dollars to ones that are way more affordable than that. And the one I ended up going with was because there was a ton of reviews of how it was a really good printer but the cost wasn't very high at all and everybody was amazed at how good a prints that this $200 machine could make. The other thing that adds to the cost of a printer will be how much filament costs which is the basically like plastic tube that you use to go into the printer. Um, so basically you have your filament and these can range anywhere from like like 16 to dollars to around like 25 30 dollars depending on what brand you get and like what it is because they have all sorts of like crazy different types of filaments and things like that that you can use in your printer um the brand i use um is this one and it only costs like 17 bucks and uh, you can find it on amazon and things like that but if you kind of compare like the prices on different things, you can kind of figure out how much a model costs to print. So I ended up printing out some awesome virus cubes for Pandemic, and they really add to like the theme and the feel of the game. And I wanted to figure out how much these cubes cost. So basically you can do just a little bit of math. In your slicer, it shows the amount of grams that your project uses. And you can basically take those grams and divide it by a thousand because your rolls of filament are gonna have like a thousand on it and then times it by the price of your filament and therefore you'll get a price that's very close to what it would actually cost or how much filament you're actually using and so like these pandemic cubes like the entire set to print out ended up costing like a dollar worth of plastic let me know in the comments down below what you've been 3d printing if you have a 3d printer or what you'd love to see 3d printed so on the next print pieces i'll see you then and today we're going to talk about the quality that your 3D printer can create. So the quality of 3D printing is really mostly all about time. How much time do you want it to take for your stuff to print out? There's a thing that you can adjust in your slicer called layer height. And if you change it to a much lower layer height, you'll get a lot better quality print, but it'll make the time go up that it takes to print. So the layer height basically chooses how thick the layers are that's building. It can build tiny little layers, which will give you a lot more detail and make it have a lot less of those lines you see on a lot of 3D printings, or you can have it do it faster and you'll be able to have more noticeable lines, but you'll get the prints done way quicker and you can go on to printing the next thing. It's all about choosing how fast you want to print things, how much like infill and different things you want to do can change the time drastically, but it's crazy the quality you can get out of a 3D printer. I got the Ender 3 thinking that, oh, it'd be a lot of fun to um, just mess around with and be able to print out some things. Maybe I'll use it for some like prototype stuff. And then when I actually got it and actually started printing things out, I was actually amazed at the quality you can get. So like, I'll show you a couple pictures of these dragons that I printed out. Um, these are from a Kickstarter called the Lost Dragons from 3D Printed Tabletop. It's actually one of the main reasons that I got into 3D printing in general to so definitely make sure to check his stuff out he has all sorts of amazing tips but the the quality that you can get out of a 3d printer is almost on par with a lot of other board game miniatures that you'd see in games um it's not exactly 100 percent um but if you put it on the table in front of you and set it out and especially if you end up painting it up like it can look ridiculous and it's amazing what you can do out of just like a thin wire of plastic going through a 3d printer and printing it out if you have a really good stl file and you can always just change your quality settings and make a lot of your prints just look a lot better if you're willing to take the time to make it happen well thanks so much for joining me on printed pieces i hope you've enjoyed this segment let me know in the comments down below what you've been 3d printing if you have a 3d printer or what you'd love to see 3D printed. So on the next print pieces, I'll see you then. Today we're gonna take a look at all of the things that you could make for just one game. And that game is Arkham Horror LCG. So there's a few things I printed out for Arkham Horror LCG already. I printed out this really crazy looking like 
a bent like uh, deck holder that holds basically like the agenda and the act cards that have these crazy tentacles coming up. And then it also has places for the doom tokens. And then I also got these awesome 3D printed components from a, another um, component manufacturer that has these cool like different like things you can have for the resources and stuff for clues and all sorts of different stuff like that as well. And then also I printed out a um, basically a board that you can hold the different investigator card and then have your little resources on there as well and then put your little clues on there and there's all sorts of things you can print out for just one game um there's also lots of other crazy stuff like you can get like hearts that uh look like real hearts that you could print out or you could get ones like for sanity tokens there's all sorts of different stuff like that you can get just for the game and i've seen some really cool like heart and sanity token trackers that are like these like like dial wheel things that you can print out and turn to different sides i um, mean this is all just stuff that's straight off of thingiverse that you can basically get printed off so just uh it's really cool how much stuff you can really get to just bling out one specific game. Arkham Horror LCG is definitely one of my favorite games, especially for playing solo and stuff like that. So it's really cool to upgrade those components and really immerse yourself in the theme of the game as you have tentacles and all sorts of crazy stuff coming out in the board. Let me know in the comments down below what game you would love to see things 3D printed for. And if you could completely that print out tons of upgrades for a game, what game that game would be. Well, thanks so much for joining me on Printed Pieces, and I'll see you on the next one. Hey, this is Roy Canning. I'm Nick Murphy. And this is Printed Pieces, where I talk about 3D printing and what it can bring to the board gaming hobby. I'm here at Dice Tower West, and I'm getting up with Nick about, they just started doing a whole bunch of 3D printing stuff as well, so we want to talk about what we're excited in 3D printing and what we printed recently. Yeah, uh, we've been printing a whole bunch of different stuff for board games. We printed some new birds for the game Wingspan to get mm. rid of the cubes, because we're like, these cubes are nice, but it'd be cooler if there's something else. I know people have done like bird houses, I think you've done for Wingspan. Yeah, I, I saw you guys, but I haven't been able to do okay, okay. I know some people have done birdhouse. We made little birds. We made 3D paddocks for Dinosaur Island to get rid of the um, to get rid of the tiles. And it's just there's just this plethora of, of cool stuff yeah, yeah. that we're just we're in the very beginning of it, you know? I know it's really cool because we we both talk about Thingiverse on our, our different segments and things like that and channel. And it's just crazy how many things people have made for board Everything. games out there. Everything. Not even board games. You're like, oh, I need this hinge for this specific faucet. Someone made it. Yeah, Someone yeah, made for it sure. already. Like like, like I went to go get my SD card for this camera and I had a printed out SD card holder. Know, that's sort of thing. Um, but yeah, there's all sorts of crazy stuff you make. I actually have started messing with Tinkercad and I actually, yeah. I've been playing a lot of Heroes of Land, Air and Sea here, but I actually like did some 3D printed yeah. towers for Heroes of Land, Air and Sea. So it's not perfect. This is my prototype of it, but I'm trying to figure out how to make this sort of stuff. Um, and the more people we get into 3D printing, the more things that we'll be able to print. I know some people that just from like watching my segment have already started making their own inserts for yep. games and things like yep. that. And they're throwing that th stuff up on things and there's just more things for us to print. Yeah, and there's so much help out there on the internet and stuff like that. So like, if you want to do it, do it. Like, it's so much fun. It really, really is. Awesome. Well, what what would be your favorite thing that you printed so far? My favorite thing is actually the thing we actually gave to you because we wanted to exchange something 3D printed. So. We gave him Gollum because you love, you're one of the few people who loves Lord of the Rings as much as us. Yeah, yeah. And so we printed out Gollum, we spray painted him white so that you know you can see him, but look at, look at Gollum, he's so angry. Nice, and I actually printed out these cool, like uh, being Dice Tower themed, I printed out these cool like Lipothane things, and I gave them to a bunch of different contributors. They're awesome. But they're like these things that you can like hold up to the light and see through. I'll show a little clip here. Um, but basically you can see like the Dice Tower guys with all the Dice Tower. Yeah, yeah, things. it's awesome, so cool. Well, thanks for joining us on Printed Pieces, and hopefully you're enjoying 3D Printed, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye. So today we're going to talk all about failures in printing. It's always awesome to print out cool board game components, whether it be inserts or awesome different pieces you can upgrade your game with, but sometimes they don't turn out quite right. There's all sorts of reasons that you might have failures when trying to 3D print. One of those main reasons um, that can happen a lot, especially when you just first create your printer or like build your printer is to make sure that the bed is completely level. So there are normally like knobs or different things. My 3D printer has a knobs on it and you have to like adjust those so that the um, the nozzle is at the right height away from the thing the whole time. And then also you want to make sure that, that your 3D printer is level in general so that when you get to higher levels on your prints that things aren't trying to shift or act super weird. Um, and also sometimes some of the reasons for um, failure could be that you don't have proper supports. Like maybe you just forgot to 
click the support button in Cura or forgot to make sure that certain parts of your model were supported, not realizing that there's gonna be a little bit of overhang, so you have to have that ready. Um, and if the printer's trying to print and there's nothing for it to actually print over to hold it up, you'll end up with some failure and you don't wanna end up with just big old blobs of spaghetti where things are all messed up, even if it was a model that you thought might be able to work without supports. But yeah, and on top of that, maybe you just have a file that you're just trying to print way too much at one time and it just doesn't quite work out the way you want to. There's all sorts of different reasons that your printer could fail. Um, and if you're having tons of issues with your printer, make sure to check out there's tons of Facebook groups, especially for the different types of printers that you can ask questions and hopefully a lot of people there can help you out if you're having specific problems with your printer. And also there's tons and tons of YouTube videos out there that go into a lot of technical stuff on how to fix this problem or fix this issue. But what I want to say is no matter what, like try to get out there, try to educate yourself on those sort of things and don't give up. There's amazing things you can do with 3D printing and it's definitely worth the time of trying to tweak and figure those things out. So I'll see you next time on Printed Pieces. Um, it's so awesome seeing all of you guys at Dice Tower West. So many people came up to me and talked about 3D printing and it was a blast. You're all amazing. So let me know in the comments down below what you guys are 3D printing and I'll see you on the next one. Today we're going to talk all about creating your own STL files, the little models that you can print out on a 3D printer for your 3D printing. And um, for me, at first I was trying to figure out like what program I should use. I tried to mess a little bit around with a program called Blender. I guess that's like the one that you can do sort of anything with. And uh, it was extremely complicated. I watched tons of YouTube videos trying to figure out all the different stuff. And I actually saw um, one of the guys, Kevin, who um, watches printed pieces, who had got a 3D printer and he had made some awesome Azul insert. And I'm like, holy smokes. And he had just made this and he had only had his 3D printer for like a short time. He must have experience with the 3D modeling sort of stuff. But I was super excited. I was like, where did you, how did you make that? That's insane. And um, so he showed me, or he told me about Tinkercad. And so I've been trying to learn and mess around with Tinkercad um, and figure out different things. And one of the things that I've been trying to make are are these uh, heroes of land, air and sea, like towers and, and castle things. And I've been trying to like tweak and make them just right. It's kind of interesting because it's basically just a bunch of different shapes and you can mold them into different things and then like make it so the shape is like deleting part of the shape out of it. And you can render that out into a STL file, which you can pop into Cura and easily print out. Um, the awesome thing about this is you can make all sorts of different things, whether you're making cubes for a game, you can make little different pieces you can add to games. And it's super simple to just like mess around and fiddle with stuff and then take it to your printer and print it out um, which is super exciting because if more people in the board gaming community get into making more things for board games and throwing them up on Thingiverse there's just going to be more things board game related that people can make um, so let me know in the comments down below if there's a specific program you would use to make files and what sort of things would you love to see made 3D printed for board games? Is there a specific game that could have amazing things you could think up? Because the sky's the limit with this sort of thing, so it's really exciting to see people make more components for board games. So this has been Printed Pieces. Thanks so much for joining me, and I'll see you on the next one. Well, today we're gonna to be talking all about 3D printing as a game designer. So there's all sorts of ways you can use 3D printing in your game designs, whether it be to print out like different cubes, maybe you need some cubes for your game, or maybe you need like certain shaped meeples. There's all sorts of stuff you can do with that. And hey, maybe your prototype just has like tokens and different things representing or little standees representing your stuff. You can actually find tons of STL files for amazing miniatures, especially if you need like D&D fantasy type miniatures, or even all sorts of other things like robots or different all sorts of different crazy things you can print out to make your prototype look even better. And if you're a newer um, designer, this will make your prototype look great and like help people want to play your game more. And also like when you're pitching it to a publisher, if they're like, oh, he, he printed out these filler, like stand in like 3D things, but he must be like really passionate about this game. So it can help you pitch the game as well if your game looks great. So there's also ways you can create your own things to be 3D printed. Um, if you just mess around with a little bit of Tinkercad, you can make different things. I actually need like a little C clip to like fit on a base for a thing. And I, I actually went into Tinkercad and simply design this thing that I wouldn't really be able to like cut out in cardboard without it like looking too too crazy. I could print it out on my 3D printer and be able to utilize that for um, my prototype. And there's all sorts of different things you can do as a designer. It just kind of makes sense as a designer to be able to create things that um, help out with your prototypes and your board game. And also if you're like a big name designer, maybe you have 3D files that are being made for your game already. And so you've gotten the game all the way to the design point. 
you could print out some of these to be able to play test or like show off the game with these 3D models from the files that are already being sent off for production. So there's all sorts of ways that 3D printing can be awesome from a design standpoint and if you're a designer especially. So definitely check it out and definitely be thinking about that as you're looking at your designs. So thanks so much for joining me on Printed Pieces and I'll see you on the next one. This week on Printed Pieces, we're talking all about 3D printed inserts for board games. Inserts are things that help you organize your components into your board game, and there's all sorts of different inserts that have come out, whether they be laser cut wooden ones or foam core ones that people have built, but we're gonna be talking about 3D printing inserts for your board game. So there's an insert that I decided I would uh, fi I found on Thingiverse, and I thought would be really cool to do in a game, just a small, simple game, and I took a shot at printing out an insert for Tiny Epic Quest. So it's kind of cool because it has spaces for all your little meeple characters and the item meeple stuff goes underneath a thing and it has a place for the dice and a place for the cards to be held in place. And inserts are always cool to keep your game nice and organized. There are tons of different board game inserts that you can 3D print out. And um, as you're doing them, most of these inserts are gonna come in like several different pieces because a lot of board games, um, the boxes are bigger than like the bed that you would have for your 3D printer. Um, my 3D printer is an Inter 3 and the bed size is like 9 inches by 9 inches. So most boxes are bigger than that. So a lot of these inserts that you find on Thingiverse or different things like that come in a bunch of different pieces. Maybe there's a piece that holds cards and then another piece that holds tokens and all these pieces come together to be able to make the full insert. Since I did Tiny Epic Quest, I was able to print it all out on the bed at the same time. So that made it a little bit easier for that sort of stuff. But there's all sorts of things um, you can do, whether it's like Arkham Horror LCG or like Clank or there's all sorts of different inserts you can find out there on Thingiverse. It's really cool to have these inserts and the community that has come around and made a lot of these inserts that are free for you to be able to download and print out to keep your game organized. So awesome. Let me know in the comments down below what things you would love to 3D print or what things would be cool for 3D printing for a board game. And thanks so much for joining me here on Printed Pieces. And we'll talk about some more board game stuff next time. I'll see you then. I love board game experiences and how board games can like immerse you in a world. There's tons of things you can make in 3D printing that can make your game more immersive and look really cool. So I want to talk about a few different things that I found around the internet for that. So one of the really cool things that I just recently printed out was a whole bunch of these cool doors and bookshelf barricades and trap doors that I found for Mansions of Madness. These look really great and um, I printed them out in like brown PLA. So uh, it kind of just blends in even without doing any washes or anything crazy to it. It just looks kind of great. Um, and then there's also other cool things I've seen, like you could get like miniatures for Clank to like replace some of the meeples. There's tons of different stuff for like Blackstone Fortress, like the Warhammer Quest board game, it's like 3D terrain you can put around all over the board. There's all sorts of cool stuff you can find out there to like just bling out your game and make it feel more immersive as you play these games. So there's all sorts of amazing stuff that you can print. I know I've been talking about that for a long time here on Printed Pieces and how 3D printing can make your games fun and great. And if you have any questions about 3D printing, make sure to leave them in the comments below. Thank you for joining me on Printed Pieces and I'll see you on the next one. Hey everybody, this is Printed Pieces, where I talk about 3D printing and what it can bring to the tabletop hobby. So I decided to bring 3D printing to this show. It's normally on Monday, but since I'm running this whole thing, I figured I'd talk with you guys about some 3D printing stuff and just talk a little bit about my journey in 3D printing. So I got a 3D printer for Christmas. Uh, was definitely a lot of fun. I was super excited, but I just had figured out that I was gonna be moving down to Homestead, Florida for the Dice Tower. So I didn't wanna like set it up and build it all and then have to move it as well because uh, I had watched several like building videos and I was not super confident on how well it could move built because it's kind of like a structure thing. Um, there's tons of pictures of my 3D printer which is an Ender 3 in a lot of my previous printed pieces episodes but I wanted to show you guys some of the things I've 3D printed even though some of them I showed on the show before but it'd be cool to just have a bunch of different stuff. I printed way more stuff than the things that I have here um, but yeah one of the things is one of the first things I did was I printed like this little 3D printed dog thing. Um, um, this is what comes on the um, Creality Ender 3 to print out. And just like when this came out and I was printing, I was just like, oh my goodness, this is crazy. I'm gonna be able to make so much board game stuff 
with this thing. Um, and then I printed like some silly stuff for my kids as well. This is like the non-board game stuff, just like flexible dinosaur guy. You know, my son, like I was like, hey, I can now print toys for my kids. Well, from there it went on to printing all sorts of different things. Um, one of the main things I was super excited about is um, 3D printed tabletop gave me some files for dragons that I printed out. And this was the first time I saw like the kind of miniature that a 3D printer could actually create, which like flip, like made me freak out and like the the guys here at the studio were like oh my goodness those look crazy and you can definitely tell they're 3d printed from the bottom like with the uh, markings and everything but you print them in different pieces and can glue them together and I even put like color shift paints on some of them so they look kind of crazy um, but they're really cool if you want to play like a D&D &D game or something like that um, and I'm like man I need to design a dragon game so I can just play with these cool dragons um, but then I had so many people online asking me about inserts and different inserts and I knew inserts come in a bunch of different pieces and would be hard to print out and take a while. Um, but one of the main things that I wanted to print out is I printed out an insert for my tiny epic quest. So it comes with places to hold all your little meeples in there and um, all these different plastic pieces. They come in like little, they all like print out separately. So it's like, oh cool, there's a little dice holder. And majority of the time you can find a lot of these files on Thingiverse. Um, a lot of, there's an awesome community that um, puts all these files up on Thingiverse, and there's all sorts of different things you can print out. Um, and then one of my friends, uh, Kevin, that actually went on the cruise ship, um, he didn't have an Ender 3, or didn't have a printer, he, I think he got an Ender 5 or something like that, but he didn't have a printer before, like I, and I was talking about 3D printing, and he had watched the show a little bit, um, but he showed me Tinkercad, which actually allows you to create things. So I love Heroes of Land and Sea, so I made like different towers and things like that for uh, my game, because it comes with those cardboard towers and stuff as well um, but I, I, um, I really enjoyed that and the fact that I could like mess around and build things I'm not really much of a drawer or like I can't really sculpt things but like just square blocks and things like that were fine but one crazy thing that I did make which I actually printed out yesterday I was gonna try to put a whole segment together and have a thing 3d print real fast in front of everybody but it didn't quite work out because recording something for five hours doesn't really make it happen. But I printed a little, since Tom's not here, I printed out a little 3D Tom Vassal so we can have a boss here at the studio while he's gone. Um, but yeah, so there's all sorts of different things you can do with 3D printing and lots of exciting things um, that make board games interesting like you can print out different pieces for games to make them more exciting and more thematic or things that with utility like like um inserts or just different tokens that are like more durable than maybe the tokens that came in the game um so it's really cool to see all the things you can do with 3d printing um let me know what uh you guys like for 3d printing in the chat um i know that several other of our contributors are actually like do 3d printing as well which is really cool because i know um randy and them do uh 3d printed stuff um, but yeah, there's tons of great stuff. Um, 3D printed tabletop is also a place where, uh, is a website where I found the files that I put in Cura to be able to use on my Ender 3. So I basically, it felt like I quick started when I started doing um, 3D printing because I just used somebody else's files. You can find other people's files on the internet. It puts those settings in your machine and most of my stuff has come out pretty great. I have had plenty of failures and it's definitely one of those things that you have to work with back and forth to figure out what's good, but it's definitely lots of fun. Um, but yeah, yeah, I would definitely love like 3D printed airships and like different things for Heroes of Land, Air, and Sea 2 but I'm not that good at doing the sculpting thing yet. So I can do cubes and squares, but I've had other people ask for that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, lots of awesome stuff. Well, thanks everybody for joining me on Printed Pieces. Um, keep chatting below about 3D printing and what you're excited about. And we have lots more contributors to go, so let's get to that. So I was trying to figure out what to do for my segment this week, seeing that I just did a print and pieces on the last Board Game Breakfast Live, live and everything. So I was trying to figure out what should I talk about, what should I do for this one. And I actually got a geek mail message on Board Game Geek from Nicholas saying something about how he got his Batman copy in, but the tokens and cards, it was really hard to figure out a good way to store them. So he went ahead and designed a 3D printed thing to hold all the different tokens and stuff. He talked about how he enjoyed the show and um, wanted to see if I wanted to cover it. And so uh, I 
thought, hey, I'm gonna get my copy of Batman in soon. It'd be really cool to go ahead and try to 3D print something like this. Um, so you can see the different pictures. He's got like different um, parts of like the Batman container thing and like how he's got different things for all the different tokens. I don't even have my copy of the game yet, but I'm excited to see if I can 3D print this thing out and put it all together to make it look good to hold the different tokens and such. So my goal for this week is to try to get this print it out, bring it back, and show you guys next week. And it's just really cool how there's interesting things in these games where it's like I don't have a good storage solution. If I had to get this thing or put it in a bunch of bags or put it in like a um, little Plano box or something like that. But it's cool that 3D printing can add solutions to that immediately when people are like designing and putting these things up on Thingiverse so that everybody can download them and make their games better and make them easier to play. So awesome. Thanks for joining me on Printed Pieces. We're going to see how this works out and um, I'll see you on the next one. Last week I talked about a cool Batman Gotham City insert. Um, I haven't got my copy of the game yet, but I was able to print out one of the trays for it so far. And um, this was pretty cool because it like took up my entire bed. I actually found out some of those trays are actually bigger than the bed on my Ender 3. The Ender 3 is like a nine inch by nine inch bed. And some of the inserts that were actually part of that STL file were like huge. So I'm gonna have to like look into like slicing it and maybe like printing it out in two pieces and gluing it together. There's a lot of different things you can do to like have workarounds if your, your 3D printer isn't big enough to print out some certain things. This is really cool because this will have spaces to hold the cards in it and then also spaces to just have different different tokens for the game. I really wish I could show you all of the um, different Batman Gotham City Chronicles stuff in here, but I haven't got my copy yet. So hopefully it's on the way, but uh, maybe I'll get it all printed out by the time the game comes in. I'll just be ready to go. That's one of the cool things about 3D printing is that there's all sorts of people making cool 3D printed stuff for board games out there. And uh, you can just like find a game that you love, look it up on Thingiverse, see if there's different pieces for it. I know one of the things that I really want to do next is make um, some things for Journeys to Middle Earth because I love that game. It's just really cool to bling out your board games with exciting 3D printed stuff. So, hey, hopefully you're having fun with these 3D printed segments. I'm definitely having fun doing them. And hopefully uh, share with me some stories about your interest in 3D printing or some of the things that you've printed. Well, make sure to leave that in the comments below and make sure to check those and I'll see you on the next 3D printed pieces. Peace. And today I figured I'd do something a little bit different. I'll show you a 3D print from beginning to end. So first off, I'm gonna be printing out some Lord of the Rings tokens here, the exploration tokens for the journeys in Middle Earth. So first I'm gonna go on Thingiverse and download these to Cura. So I got them all loaded up in Cura. Time to pop in my little mini SD card here and get it all loaded up to go on the 3D printer. You can also see here in Cura that these six little tokens are gonna cost me 34 cents. Oh my goodness. So I actually keep my 3D printers here under a sink. I know a bunch of people have been like, hey, is that under a sink? But we uh, pop our little SD card in here and then we turn it on. And then I have this uh, green or tealish filament on here, which I think should look good for the little tokens. And then we'll go over here into the menu and see if we can get this to print. So print from SD card, and there it is, Lord of the Rings search token. All right, well this is going to have the bed and nozzle heating up here, um, getting ready for this, and let's see if we can make a little time lapse. All right, so here they are all printed out. And we should just be able to peel this off. Normally I use like a little spatula thing, but this is a raft that they were printed on. Um, for small things like this, I like to use a raft just cause sometimes they have a tendency to like pop off the bed. But then you just peel this part off and you have a cool little token that you can use for your game. So that's pretty much it. I printed out my pieces for Journeys to Middle Earth. So now I have plastic tokens I can use and put on the board for when I'm exploring those cool locations. So thanks so much for joining us on Printed Pieces. There's all sorts of different things you can print out for 3D printing and board games. So I'll see you on the next one. Today I'm gonna to be looking at a game that I really enjoy and it just came out, but there's already a lot of really cool things for it on Thingiverse. And one of the things I wanna look at is the terrain for the Lord of the Rings Journeys in Middle Earth 
game. So this is a cooperative game that uses an app, but it's really cool because there is already a lot of like 3D printed stuff that you can get for this game. People have made inserts and different things like that, but the thing I really want to look at is the terrain they have made. So the game basically you can run around like out on the world, but then there's also where it zooms into like these different maps where you're like going through taverns or like sieging a castle and things like that. So one of the really cool things I printed out were these like little walls that you can put on the board to separate the different areas and you normally get these cardboard tokens but this you can actually use these cool 3d printed walls and they have like 3d printed statues and um different like bushes and barrels and all and tables and all that stuff and there are several people that have compiled files that work great for this and have designed things that look awesome and little fireplace things as well so definitely make sure to check out a lot of the stuff for journeys in middle earth and it just helps bring the theme of the game as you have your miniatures running around 3d objects on the board um so there's all sorts of cool stuff you can print out for that as well so let me know in the comments down below what you guys have been printing out and if there's anything you're interested in in 3D printing, let me know below and I'll see you on the next one. So I know in previous episodes I've talked about terrain that you can build with your 3D printer for different board games and stuff, but I've been messing around a lot with the Middle Earth Miniatures game from Games Workshop for the Lord of the Rings characters, and I thought it'd be really cool to have some fantasy terrain to put around the board to have with these Lord of the Rings characters as you play the game. So I looked on Thingiverse for fantasy terrain and I found these really cool towers that I was able to put together, print out. I printed out, there's all sorts of different ruin like patterns um, that you can print out. And I printed out like a base and then like, I was like, man, that looks really good. So I print out like a top to that. And then I print out another base with a different like ruin pattern on it. And then print out another top to that. And I think when you put these sort of things on the board as you're playing the game, it definitely makes it feel a lot more thematic. And of course, miniatures games have the rules for all the terrain and stuff like that. Um, I also found this cool like looking pool or whatever or like well sort of thing it's i guess it's supposed to be like a scrying pool sort of thing but i thought that'd be good as like a centerpiece to a town for like these miniatures games and stuff like that so i print out one of those as well and put some resin in there to uh, make it look like it was real water in it and stuff like that um but there's all sorts of amazing things you can print out for like 3d terrain if you're into miniatures games or into games like that and things that can just make your board games and miniatures games come to life as 3d printing you can just print out all sorts of stuff and a lot of these pieces would cost you tons of money like um just one of these 3d like wall things cost me like a dollar fifty to print out in in filament so it takes a while to print like it would take up to 12 hours but it was definitely worth the time for the uh the way that they look when they're done well thanks so much for joining me on printed pieces and i'll see you on the next one Hey, this is Roy Canny, and I'm here with Danny, the 3D printed DM. Hi. <laughs> I've talked about his channel on the show several times before, um, but I just wanted to get a chance to meet up with you here at Origins and talk about like your experience with 3D printing and how easy it is. I know you do a lot of the printing out of D and D models and stuff like that as well. So tell us a little bit about what you do. Sure. So my channel is focused on talking about and teaching people how to 3D print. I'm, I'm very much not a techie person, so it's geared towards the person who is new and beginning. There's a lot more technical channels out there, but mine is focused on just the everyday person who wants to print stuff for... I, I play mostly RPGs, but it's for anybody, whether it's wargaming or board games in general. Yeah, I think it's really cool because like one of the main reasons I started making these videos is because I like, watched your stuff, I did some stuff, I was like, man, the dice tower in like board games needs representation for like 3D printing and there's so many cool things you can 3D print for board games. Um, and then watching your stuff I was like, I feel like I could like make, make some 3D printed things as well. Thanks for that, Roy. Um, definitely. So I think there's so much free stuff available online and there's so many options, paid options too, both for RPGs, board games. Uh, if you go to this website called Thingiverse that you can go check out and you can pretty much type in you know, your favorite board game and see what people have made, all sorts of inserts and markers and stuff. And uh, we're in a very different place than we were like five years ago when 3D printing was just really starting to get big. And it's, it's a really great time. It's like, it's an amazing time to have a 3D printer for a board gamer. That's one of the things like I keep like hyping on the uh, the uh, show is like oh man the more people that get into 3D printing the more people that will be designing 3D prints and the more things for all these different board games will have to print out. Thanks everybody for joining us on this printed pieces segment and um, we'll see you guys on the next one. 
How's it going? I'm Roy Candy and this is Printed Pieces, where I took a look at 3D printing and how it can be used in the board gaming hobby. And I'm here with Randy Kirby from We Game Together. One half. One half. The the not that's not the better half. I'm well, sorry. cool. But you are the 3D printing half. I am so, the 3D printing so half. That's the only well, about. that's the whole. Exactly. <laughs> she print it all. <laughs> so we um, are here to talk about, and we both printed off some things. We're meeting up at Origins, and we're gonna like show off the things that we printed off. And uh, I want to show you a thing that I made. So I printed this thing. Oh out. wow, that is sweet. <laughs> so uh, I don't know if you've seen this on Thingiverse. I haven't. No. It's like the the basically the thing that goes in the middle of the table for side, the factory. That's cool. Um, actually, Tom had seen this and he's like, "Oh, I'd really love to have that for the Dice Tower Library." So I'm like, "Oh, cool. I'm gonna like print this out." And I printed out. I mean, this took you know something like that takes a while. Oh, yeah. It took me like uh, I think like a day and a half or something because oh, I, I printed it on like. Decent oh, like resolution, super, yeah, yeah. and then I painted it up because uh, you know it's purple because Tom likes purple because I paint. So, uh, do you do any painting with any of your stuff? You know, or? I'm actually, I'm actually, I think I'm pretty good at painting, mm -hmm. but I hate it. I, I, oh, I just yeah. don't. It's too tedious for me. I think it's super relaxing. Yeah, just I painting just... your little board game. You like games with cubes. You don't need to paint cubes, right? <laughs> well, you gotta paint them like stripes, maybe. Okay. Zebra cubes. <laughs> awesome. I haven't seen it yet. Cool, cool. Well, you've done a ton of 3D printing as well. I have. So. I've been doing it for a little while, yeah. Uh, just started doing a lot more board gaming mm -hmm. stuff. Got sick of my first printer, mm -hmm. and then ended up buying a Prusa, yeah. which has been a million times better than what I had before. I've heard that it was great. It's so. great. Yeah, it's it's very user-friendly. And one of the things that I really love is you use, is it the Octoprint thing that you yeah, have? Yeah, Octoprint, yes. And you can, like, make these videos where it shows it layer by layer just building up. I'll show you some it's of those. super neat. And then like just come up out of the board and you've done like all sorts of different stuff. I've seen you post on social media like different yeah. inserts and different things yeah, and different tokens fun. and it's really I just cool. love I just love how it looks like it's just kind of rising It's just up. building it's out from cool. the depths. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Well thanks so much for joining us on Print Pieces and thanks so much Randy for joining me and thanks it's you, been a ton Roy. of fun. <laughs> and we'll see you guys on the next one. See ya. This week I want to talk about a game that I have 3D printed stuff for to the max. So I am talking about Wiz War. Wiz War is one of my favorite games of all time, and I thought it would be really cool because it's you're going through a dungeon trying to collect these treasures. It'd be really cool if there were dungeon walls for the game. So I took some walls that I was using for Journeys to Middle Earth, and I ended up like shrinking some of them so they were smaller as well, and I printed out a ton of these to put all over the board. So, and it's been really cool to um, paint these things up and try to make them look cool. So I was like, well, next, what I think I need, I need to get some of the treasure chests so the wizards aren't just taking around little treasure chest tokens. I can actually have 3D representations of that. And on Thingiverse, you can literally just type in whatever you want. And I found like several different treasure chests, of course, of varying sizes. And the cool thing is that in Cura, where you print these things out, you can like scale the size of whatever image it is and whatever um, STL file is. So I made the treasure chest all the same size, got them, got them spray primed and painted up. So I had cool treasure chests in the game as well and then of course I needed the portals that go on the sides because in this game wizards can go through portals and get to the other side of the board so that way you can jump on people I took this to Dice Tower Tacon and if I played it with you it was a ton of fun and I really I feel like this is now gonna be in my rotation of like games that I take to things to like show off the cool 3d components and play with a lot of people so it's really cool how the thematic immersion can like explode in these games when you make them just pop off the board with 3d printing there's a lot of cool stuff you can do and if you're you're a little bit creative even though people don't have sets for specific games you can end up melding stuff together to make it look really cool for a board game well thanks so much for joining me on printed pieces tell me in the comments down below your 3d printing experience or if you're interested in getting a 3d printer so and also what kind of 3d printer content would you like to see as well thanks so much for joining me and i'll see you on the next one well, if you made it through all of that, there's definitely a ton there. And it's really hard to talk about all the intricacies and technical aspects of 3D printing in these two minute segments. So I don't want this video to be too long either, but there's tons of resources out there for you to find out more information about 3D printing and the technical aspects and troubleshooting and like where to get started. And there's tons of people reviewing, comparing different ones. So make sure to check out all over YouTube for a lot of that stuff. I just like to show off some of the cool things you can print out for board games and why a board gamer might enjoy 3D printing. Well, thanks for joining me here on this Print Pieces video, and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. 
Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.